Well, Texas A&M left a lot to be desired offensively last season, but things could change in 2023, and we need to talk about it. But if you haven't, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. By doing so, it greatly helps out my channel, and it helps me grow as a content creator. Well, last season, uh, Texas A&M offense, man, was just uh, very, very inconsistent, you know, lacking, uh, for a better word, um, just wasn't good enough. And um, we all know Jimbo Fisher, for the most part, you know, he calls the plays, and um, he wanted to make some changes this upcoming season, and uh, he brought in a new offensive coordinator. You know, he brought in Bobby Petrino. Uh, I think this is going to be a splash higher for Texas A&M. Uh, we all know about Bobby Petrino. But uh, I'm going to just read off, you know, a couple of stats. The Aggies' offense last season, like I said, was just bad. You know, they had a 4-8 and eight showing in the 2022 season. Uh, that's really, really bad, guys. Um, eight losses last season with a team, you know, everybody expected to do, you know, make some noise. They was only averaging 22.8 points per game, you know, last season, which was 101st in the nation. And Texas A&M was 87th in first downs and 95th in total offense. So uh, that goes to show you just how bad they were, you know, last season. And, um, you know, you expect more from a team like Texas A&M, you know. But uh, ever since they've been, you know, they, they first came in the SEC, I think in 2012, and um, ever since then, haven't even scratched, you know, at even potentially being in the playoff. And um, Jimbo Wynn hired Bob Petrino, and um, I think he's going to pay dividends for him. Uh, Petrino was, you know, the offensive coordinator and got hired over there at UNLV under, you know, former Arkansas uh, defensive coordinator uh, Barry Odom. But uh, he took a lateral move and came to uh, Aggieland and um, – you know, this is Jimbo Fisher's fifth year, you know, over there at Texas A&M, and uh, he wanted to make a splash. But uh, he can make one with uh, Bobby Petrino, man. Petrino's primarily, you know, primarily good with gunslingers. So uh, we all know what he did for Lamar Jackson, you know, helping him win a Heisman in 2016. So uh, things could be looking up for Texas A&M, guys. Petrino, you know, he's 61. Um, the last past three seasons, you know, he spent – uh, as a head coach for Missouri State, you know, uh, FCS school, you know, he led them to 18 to 15 uh, record. And uh, he helped them get to a pair of uh, playoff appearances as well. So uh, he did a pretty good job over there. But uh, we all know, you know, by his stints at Louisville, you know, from 2003 to 2006, where he had Lamar Jackson. Like I said, Lamar Jackson won the Heisman those years. I won them uh, years. And um, in 2014, 2018, you know, so he was there both those times. And then, of course, uh, he had four seasons at Arkansas. You know, he had a couple of, you know, off-the-field problems, you know, while he was over there at Arkansas. But uh, he's going to be tasked with helping, you know, Fisher, man. Fisher went so far he's 39-21 and 21 during his time in College Station. Uh, he definitely wants to turn that around. And um, he went ahead and fired, you know, Darnell Dickey, you know, the co-offensive coordinator uh, at Texas A&M. And, um, and he also, you know, fired, you know, coordinator James Coley as well. So, you know, they had a you know, splint, you know, uh, jobs as the coordinators over there. And um, he went ahead and got rid of those guys and brought in Petrino. Uh, like I said, Petrino, man, uh, like I said, helped uh, Lamar Jackson win the Heisman. And uh, he's just a great offensive mind, guys. And um, he's going to take over, you know, like I said uh, earlier, Jimbo Fisher primarily, you know, Calls the plays, but uh, he's going to give the full, you know, the keys to Petrino, and uh, he's going to have a good quarterback to work with in Connor Wayman. Connor Wayman, in my opinion, uh, should have started, you know, a lot more games last season, and um, I don't know why, you know, he elected, you know, not to start him, but uh, Connor Wayman has promise. Wayman, you know, he's going to be a sophomore. He threw for 896 yards and eight touchdowns in five games last season. Uh, his his best game was against Ole Miss, where he went 28 for 44 for 338 yards and four touchdowns. So he has the potential, guys, very, very uh, high potential. And um, he had a highlight moment against, you know, LSU. LSU was ranked number five at the uh, time. Uh, he threw for 155 yards and two touchdowns, and they upset, you know, LSU. 
uh, beat them 38 to 23. So um, this Aggie offense has the potential, guys. Um, like I said, they got great, you know, talented players all around them. Uh, they got receiver Anaya Smith. Then they got tight end Max Wright. So Texas A&M is never lacking for the talent. You know, it's just offensively they've been kind of, you know, a suspect. But um, another thing also that Texas A&M has, and I think it's going to greatly help them, they got a new running backs coach, guys. And um, his name is Markwell Blackwell. Uh, this guy uh, helped. You know, he was over there at Ole Miss. We all know Ole Miss run game was really, really good last season. Uh, Ole Miss ranked, I think, third in the country last season. Let me read that again. Yeah, they ranked third in the country last season. And he only was over there at Ole Miss for one uh, season. Uh, his previous stance was at Houston, you know. But a uh, very, very good running back coach, guys. Ole Miss had the third highest rushing offense out of all FBS schools last year on the Blackwell. And they had – they was averaging 256 yards per game. That's per game, guys, last season. Prior to that, the Aggies were ranked 80th with just 141 rushing yards a game. So, I mean, that's going to be insane for Texas A&M, guys, uh, bringing Blackwell in. He was able to do that in one season at Ole Miss. So, uh, huge upgrade for Texas A&M uh, at the running, uh, running back coach position and the offensive coordinator. Texas A&M offense can take off, guys. Texas A&M wasn't lacking on the defensive side of the ball. They really, really stout on the D-line, guys. Uh, Texas A&M got some dogs on the D-line. So uh, the defense wasn't really the problem. It was the offense. The offense couldn't really score. You know, wasn't explosive. But uh, I think these are some splash hires for Texas A&M. It's going to be interesting to see what they do this season, guys. Uh, my tide, we got to go to College Station this season. Uh, they have one of the biggest stadiums in the country guys and um it's gonna be interesting considering that uh we got a quarterback you know question you know and uh we don't know who's gonna start but uh whoever's gonna start that's gonna you know it's gonna be a big deal going to college station and trying to win against the 12th man but uh what do you guys think do you think Texas A&M is gonna uh improve dramatically offensively you know let me know in the comment section and once again guys if you haven't please like share and subscribe to the channel and I'll definitely be back with more college football content. Thanks, guys, and roll tide.